you know, 40 years since the founding of Apple Computer. And yep. that's kind of nice to celebrate that birthday with somebody who helped make such a difference in our lives. I brought out my inside Macintosh ah. volumes. This, Carolyn Rose. Yeah, She's boy, my did hero. She, she documented it all. And anybody who wanted to write software for the Macintosh needed this. But this is nowadays, you know, if you if you you can get the Windows documentation, a full API documentation. It's similar to this, but at the time, nobody had done this before. Yeah. The ROM itself was brilliant. The idea that you build a computer that has all the primitives built into it, into the hardware, to do windows and all these things that you're doing, it blew my mind. The way you get software to be interoperable and compatible user interface is to provide tools in the ROM so that it's easier for a developer to use those tools. They can write their own one She doesn't have to write her own. If, yeah. But if you use these, um, it, you won't have to write them and you'll look more like the other apps and so it'll be easier for somebody who's already learned how to yes. use one app to, to use another app. It was a, it was a wonderful virtuous uh, circle because of course you had the user interface guidelines. What do you got Can there? I bring out He's this? He's got something. Yeah, okay, bring this, this out. Is, Look at this. This is uh, December 1983. Oh, man, here, hold it up a little higher there. Actually, yeah, you know what I'll... You manage the reflection. Yeah, there you here. go. Yeah. <laughs> that is you, this of is, course. This uh, is me. I had a little more hair back then. This is 33 years ago. Wow. And that's Steve. And I look at his eyes. He's kind of got this little calculating look like, how can I harness this kid's <laughs> energy? <laughs> this is two months before the release of the Macintosh. Yeah, it came out in January, January 24, 1984. 1984. I got mine in March. I was a 100-day buyer. I went to Macy's with my credit card. I had wanted a Lisa so badly, and I couldn't afford that. But yeah. 2500 bucks. I thought, maybe I can get that. It was the first three. We all wanted it to be 1500 I know. I know, it was really a great disappointment. Last yeah. minute, it got jacked up to 2400 uh, And it didn't change the world right away, I think, no. because of that price Apple point. Apple almost died. Yeah. It was a little slow. But people, you know, I got it. The minute I turned one on and booted it up, the minute you saw Steve turn it on and it said, hello, it was, wow. And that, by the way, that hello, that first hello written in the program you wrote, Mac Paint. Mm -hmm. So this, um, this, this computer had... 128k bytes of semiconductor memory. Wow. This one has 128 gigabytes of <laughs> semiconductor memory. A factor of a million. A million more. million more memory. And it isn't really that much bigger. <laughs> Uh, it's, Somebody made for me, or made, I love and this. I got this. I love this. When the iPad came out, yeah. they made a Padintosh. See, it's a cover for <laughs> There's uh, the, the hello. back of, a, of an iPad. There's it here. I'll show it over, I'll show it over, over here. It. Isn't that funny? You, read, you wear that on your... And by the way, I love it that you use an iPad that you... Oh, yeah. You know, I think Jeff would have... What do you think Jeff would have thought of the, uh, of the iPad? Because he wanted to make... I remember he had... His vision was... You know, uh, what, what did he call it? I can't remember. Uh, the Cannon Cat was an information appliance. An information appliance. Yeah. Uh, he had a great heart, and some of the ways that he was short-sighted was that he didn't think in terms of a platform. Yeah. And this is why Steve took the project away from him. Right. Jeff was the father of the Macintosh project. Steve was actually the father of the Macintosh, mm -hmm. and the, he, he had to take it away because he wanted to make it an open platform people could write for. The apps are what make the Mac have, worth having. And what uh, Jeff thought was, well, it's like an appliance. You, you buy a toaster and it has right. a certain set of features, and it, you don't ever That's expect it. it to do anything more. Um, Jeff wanted the Mac to have a 256 by 256 pixel display. It was cute because you could address it with a 16-bit number, any one pixel. That was kind of short-sighted, but he, he didn't want to use the 68,000 processor. He did want a bitmap did. display. I mean, that was yeah. a, that was important. Oh no, he was just very early bits. in pushing toward a bitmap display. Yeah, but um, he didn't want it to use the 68,000 processor. Really, what did he want? To use? 6809, a little teeny 8-bit huh. processor that um, you know would have been cheaper, yeah. but wouldn't have been able to use any of the stuff that I'd written for the Lisa. So quick draw, because we were using a 68,000, was pretty much a direct port. Um, I gave the sources to Andy Hertzfeld, and he did a few tweaks to them, but basically That's cool. uh, it in went in the wrong. I think, I, owned, I think my code owned, two th owned more, or more than one third of the entire ROM. Wow. But that was more than quick draw, or was that just quick draw? quick draw. A third of the ROM was quick draw. Yeah. What was quick draw? Tell us about quick draw. Quick draw 
was the graphic primitives that Elisa and Mac used. When you um, draw some text, who turns the pixels on and off? When you draw uh, lines or a shaded areas with a texture pattern, right. who turns the pixels on and off? As you a didn't programmer, want the you just want applications to, to have to do that. Right. It would be really, really slow. As a programmer, you just want to say, draw a circle here, yeah. shade it 50% uh, gray. You don't want to think about how that's getting, uh, getting right. done. And it needs to be done very fast. That's the so key, isn't it? I wrote software. I, it had to be done pretty much all in assembly language mm -hmm. and even with unrolled loops where I'd had, you know, wow. a part of the code, it would know we've got we to do 17 uh, long words across. It would jump into a table 17 from the end of the table. So it would do it with, without any decrement and branch instructions to eat up. Because that had slowed down. The computer was only... Uh, um, I think Lisa was only five megahertz processor cl uh, clock, and the yeah. Mac was eight megahertz. Right. And so what you could do in a microsecond wasn't that much. So what I wanted it to be is such that you could use um, software driving of all of the interface and do it performant enough that real applications could use it. Previously, it had been done in hardware, right? I yeah. Mean, that was what, what that was what Apple did, What happened in Apple is you put one byte in a location, and a character generator ROM would read out the five by seven dot pattern right. as the the computer as the display was scanning, right. and that was very efficient, very fast. But it meant you could only do the characters that were in that ROM. Right. You couldn't do graphics. Right. Uh, there were a number of decisions that went in that were um, really based on Jeff's insistence on doing uh, an all graphical interface. The first was a white background with black text. Now before like a this, piece of paper. our computers had black backgrounds yeah. and either green white or, or green yeah. or amber. <laughs> yeah. And my argument, and the hardware guys on the Lisa team really did not want that. No because kidding. Because it would flicker more. Right. It would uh, wear out the phosphor faster. Right. It required um, it required a faster phosphor so that it wouldn't smear as you scrolled. Um, and my argument was, if you're going to do graphics. I mean, I can see inverting text going from white on black to black on white when mm -hmm. you go to print. You're never going to print on black paper. You're going to print mm -hmm. on white paper. Mm -hmm. If you want to have graphics, you're not going to want to invert them because you're, how do you know whether to invert this part and not that part? You need to have a white, you need to have a white right. background on the display so that when you print it onto white paper, it worked. Right. And it was kind of a big fight over that, and, and uh, Jobs sided with me on that. He, now, were you he with, took my argument. Were you with Steve when he went to Xerox and saw the, 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 yep. what they were doing? Yeah. So how important was that? I mean, were you already thinking along those lines? Yep. Yes, we were. We had already, uh, we already had software working in the lab that used a white background, that used okay. a mouse that we had gotten. You know, I used my first mouse in 1971 down at the University of California in San Diego. In Kent Wilson's chemistry lab. Wow. And uh, but it was the Doug Engelbart type it was mouse. A Doug well, it was a, a little better than the original one that was a wooden box, yeah. but it still had two uh, discs. Right. So you, you, it was kind of like an etch a sketch. You right. can't draw a 45 degree line with an etch. You can go up and over and up and. <laughs> it was designed as a pointing device right. to point to some text. Right. But it wasn't a good drawing device. That wasn't really until. Uh, I think uh, Kelly is a design firm that worked with Apple to put the ball in they there. They thought of a ball. And the ball mouse, funnily, you could actually draw yeah. in, a, in a smooth shape. Yeah. Uh, it was my, I actually convinced, uh, I think Tom Whitney was the manager who had to make the call, but I convinced him that the mouse had to be in the box. Why? I had worked on the Apple II a bunch, and they had these uh, game I.O. paddles that, you know, little knobs. and. Many people didn't have them, so if you wrote software, you didn't couldn't count on them. Right. And I said, how are you going to write a, uh, a graphics editing program that might have to work all by cursor keys? Can't do it. If you know they have a pointing device right. of any kind, I don't care whether it's a mouse or a, a tablet or, or something what, else, but if yeah. they have a pointing device, then you can do something by point and drag. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tom Whitney bought into that, and that was why there was a mouse in the box.